Everett, Washington, 25 miles north of Seattle. This blue collar town is home to the Prohibition Grill, a southern restaurant opened in 2008 by professional belly dancer, Rishi Brown. How are my lips? <laughs> They're fine. I had no restaurant experience at all, but I felt like if I could run a successful dance company all of these years, surely I could operate a restaurant business. Can I get anything for you, Molly? No. You good? Yeah. Okay. Because I have no experience. I don't run my kitchen at all. Two tops, medium, medium, and rare. I hired someone who's had 30 years of restaurant experience. Good job, Rock. Not my first trip to the rodeo. <laughs> He's amazing at his job. He's a little bit lazy. Be right back, gentlemen. He likes to smoke. He likes to talk on his phone. Hello. You know, if I have an order, I have to text him that there's an order. How's it tasting over here? It's, it's really bland. bland. We have customers that complain all the time. It's mushy. Is it? OK. I've had dishes where I've smelled it, and I was just like, you've got to be kidding me. Rocky, the ribs were disgusting. If we could fix it, we would. But Rocky keeps Rishi in the dark a little bit. What, what was the problem with the trout? There's no problem with the trout. All right. Oh, my god. Rishi is a little bit naive. She just sort of trusts Rocky. He has all the skills and all the knowledge. Yum. I don't know anything about what goes on back there. For Rishi to step in from belly dancing into running a restaurant, I don't want to use the word clueless, but she was, because she had no idea. <laughs> There's just some things that she does that I don't think a restaurant owner should do. <laughs> For instance, belly dancing. <laughs> it doesn't go with the theme of our restaurant. It makes no sense. Customers think it's weird. You know, I've been in the business 20 years. I know how a business is supposed to be run, and this is not the way. We got to get more people in here. <laughs> Unbelievable. If Prohibition Grill fails, I lose everything. I'm really discouraged. I really need help, because I'm at a complete loss to understand what's happened. And I'm not stupid, but I really don't know what's going on. Wow. Here he comes. Whoa. Wow, look at that. It's like something you get given in Vegas. You've learned to belly dance. What the hell has that got to do with the restaurants? Hi, welcome. Hello. I'm Rishi. Rishi, nice yeah, to see you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, wait a second. Yeah, that one's me. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding me. Uh, am I coming for lunch, or are we having a, 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 a belly dance? Do the owners know this goes on? Yeah, absolutely. I am the owner. Oh, you are the owner? Yes. How long have you been doing this? this 30 is... years. And then you bought a restaurant? Yes. And you still belly dance? Yes. It's really wow. fun, yeah. Wow. It's about undulating and shimmying. Right. Rolling the body in motion with vibration. Oh, that's annulating. That's, that's just like annulating. rolling your tummy. That's right. Wow. Yes. Okay. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> um, so, how do you go from belly dancing to becoming a Russian tour? Well, I decided over a cocktail one afternoon. Right. Okay. <laughs> uh, were well. you inebriated at the time? Did it sort of make your <laughs> mind a little lightheaded? Yeah, I remember it well. <laughs> But uh, then once it happened, the idea came in. There it was, it stayed. But had you ever worked in a restaurant before? Or? Um, I worked as a server for about six months one time when I was in college. Wow, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and style of food, what is that? Uh, we do a gourmet southern menu here. Gourmet. Uh huh. Wow. Fine wow. dining. We kind of have a steakhouse theme here going on, dinner house theme. Dinner house, steakhouse. Yeah. Fine dining. Yes, with a southern. little southern flair to it. Wow. Um, OK. In your mind, what's the biggest problem? In my mind, um, well, we don't have a grill here. So before, we don't have a grill here. It's called Prohibition Hence Grill. Prohibition Grill, right? Wow. A Prohibition Grill with no grill. <laughs> wow. Yeah. OK. Let me take a seat. Sure. I have a special seat right back here for you. OK, great. Uh, nice boots, by the way. Oh, thank you. 
I really believe in what we've done here, and I'm sure that Chef Ramsay is going to love the food today. Um, have you just been to a party, or...? No, I no. just got all dressed up just for you today. Oh, so you just you, you don't dress like that normally? No, I do dress like this normally. Oh, you do dress like yeah. that normally? Yeah. Wow. Uh, so I'm not special anyway, never mind. Um, Actually, I'm, you I'm, are, yeah, right. because this is a special occasion for sure. I got a little more dolled up, but right. this is my normal wow. get up. OK, great. Um, it's a big menu, huh? Yeah. Wow, Prohibition Grill, Southern Cuisine. Yes. Chef Rocky strives for originality and diversity, focusing on the quality of freshness. And without a grill, that's quite a statement. So, okay. It's so true. Well, OK. Um, how do you rate the food? Uh, what do you give your food out of 10? I give our food a 10. A I 10. think it's, yeah, I think it's amazing. I love everything on the menu. OK, great. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Chef Ramsay. Thanks for coming and enjoy your lunch today, okay? Thank you. What a uh, bizarre dress sense from the owner. I mean, she looks like she's in a fancy dress Britney Spears concert party. Hello. Hello. I am Candace. Hi, I'm Elaine. How are you? Yeah, well. Very yeah. nice to meet you. Oh, it's good to see you too. So, did Rishi get a chance to go over the menu at all with you? Um, she did briefly. Um, let's order, shall we? Okay. Um, What's the soup of the day? The soup of the day is jalapeno corn chowder. Mm -hmm. What was it yesterday? Jalapeno corn chowder. Oh, so soup every two days. And last week? Uh, so soup of the week. It's soup of the week. Uh, let's yeah. have a soup of the week. <laughs> yes. OK, um, let's go for the filet. How would you like that prepared? Um, medium rare, please. Medium rare. <laughs> let's go for the collard greens as well, the sides. The balsamic brown sugar glazed salmon. And do you know what? Throw me in a portion of the pan fried oysters. OK, we'll get that started for you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so here's my list. So we're gonna do the oysters. So why don't I start with a cup of soup? Okay, dokey. Yeah. Okay. I was just seeing what you ordered. I thought those were really great choices. Our right. oysters are wonderful here, and my chef always makes the best soups. Can I just let you into a little secret? Sure. Not in front of your customers. Can I whisper? Sure. <laughs> Soup of the day is not soup of the day. It's the same soup that was on two weeks ago. What's happening? Soup of the day means a daily changing soup. Oh. I didn't even know what the soup of the day meant. I thought that just meant what soup we were serving that day. Wow. Yeah, wow. that was lame. Soup of the day. A new soup every day. OK, I'm going to talk to him about that. Wow. <laughs> so I didn't realize that soup of the day meant a fresh soup every day. Yeah. I thought soup of the day meant what is our soup for the day. <laughs> oh, my god. I'm not that stupid. It's just that's what I understood that meant. Candace, please. Chef Ramsay, here is our soup. Thank you. Thank you, my darling. OK. Wow. Soup of the week. Mm. That's just slop. Horrible, nasty loop with some sort of dusting around the outside of the plate. Did you have a chance to taste the soup? Yeah, I had a chance. Yeah. OK, I had and? Small, uh, yeah, just uh, not nice. Gnarly. Should I just get that out of here? Uh, yes, please. OK. Uh, when was the last time you tasted it? Um, I haven't tasted it. You didn't have this soup? I haven't had this soup. Wow. Rocky, we've had the same soup for seven days. Made it Saturday. But we wrapped it and stored it properly. OK, I'm going to tell you what. The oysters are going to be fresh and delicious, made right now for you. You mean opened? You don't make an oyster, you just open them. Huh? Oysters are opened. Oh, got it. No, he's not opening them daily. Oh, so he's opening the oysters and... No, he's buying them pre-opened. And were they bought? I think they came in today. Will you just check? Yes. Thank you. Rocky? Yes? When were the oysters delivered? They were delivered here Friday. 
They were delivered Friday. Right. Yes. So the fresh oysters aren't exactly fresh, but they're from five days ago. Five days ago. But we don't get them here frozen. Mm, that's, that's, that's good to know. Frozen oysters right. in Seattle. That would be bad. Right. So far, nothing is quite as it seems. OK. So these are the oysters. OK, great. Hand-fried oysters. Thank you. You're welcome. Normally, an oyster should taste of slightly salty, creamy, delicious. These are just tasteless. So he's managed to take a delicious tasting oyster and turn it into something that's cake and cornmeal and tastes of nothing. How are the oysters? Yeah, they're bland. They just taste of nothing. I mean, let's just have a little, just have a little, just a small touch. I don't eat our oysters. Oh, you here. don't. Oh, oh, you don't eat them. I don't eat them oh, wow. here. They're not fresh, so. No. I only like fresh oysters. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm not gonna try those oysters. I think that they're gross. I know better. I'm not trying them. Um, he absolutely hated these. He thought they were gross. They're way too much cornmeal, bland. Had absolutely no flavor. Hmm. That's interesting. That makes no fucking sense. Jeff Ramsey is in the middle of sampling Prohibition's menu. They're bland. They just taste of nothing. OK. And he's already discovered a lack of freshness, a lack of flavor, and a real lack of basic restaurant knowledge by the owner. I wouldn't try the oysters because they're not fresh. Well, I thought fresh means that it's not frozen. Usually it means, like, fresh from the shell. Fresh from the shell. Right. Fresh right. from the, you know, all that sort of thing. So I'm like, like soup of the try. day. Yeah. OK. Wow. Let's try this. OK, this is a this filet is mignon. filet mignon. This is the collard greens. Collard greens. And it's wrapped in bacon, right? Wrapped in bacon, yes. Thank you, my darling. You're welcome. Mm. I mean, it's dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. It's got a horrible taint to it. Well, how did we do on this? Yeah, this is yeah, not very good. Horrible grayness to it. I don't know what he's done. It's almost like the meat's been boiled. And those there, collard greens with just mush. Wow. May I take it out of Please. your way? And thank you, mate. <sighs> 10 out of 10 so far. I'm zero out of 10, let me tell you. Uh, these are really mushy and tasteless and... Oh, yeah. Richie's like, oh, I'll be the judge of that. That's ridiculous. Those are... Incredibly wonderful. They are. They are a little mushy. They they're, do, mushy. they're a little mushy. That is the only problem, but the flavor profile is perfection. And the flay? He thinks that it's been boiled. Boiled? boiled? I think it's good. Do yeah. you like it? I know it's perfect. I know it is. So here we actually have the salmon. Bloody hell. Yeah. That's the salmon. <laughs> That's the salmon. <laughs> and why does the salmon go in a pinwheel? I don't, I don't know. Thank you. I mean, honestly, look at that plate. I mean, little balls of hush puppies, massive wedge of cornbread that looks like a door opener, and a pinwheel that fits perfectly, you know, on the side of my tomato. Wow. That is fucking disgusting. Pinwheel, yeah, I feel like doing a cartwheel out of here. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, he's banging his hands on his head. That's really bad. Is he allergic to salt? No. There's no seasoning on there whatsoever. Aged balsamic vinegar, macerated with brown sugar on salmon, needs to be backed up with salt. Shall I take no. it away? Please, yeah, okay. thank you. You're welcome. Holy crap. OK. He did not like this. He thinks that the balsamic, the reduction, needs to be backed up with salt. Hmm. He wants to know the idea between the pinwheel of the salmon. He doesn't understand it. I think it's interesting. I like it. I think it's a, I think it's a cool presentation on the plate. I like it. OK. Way to stand up for your food, Reese. Way to stand up for your food. But I do. I like that. That's one of my favorite things on our menu, is that presentation of the salmon. What can you do? Oh, shit. Here he comes. Introduce me to the team. This is Jeff. Jeff. Hi. Dennis. Dennis. Yep. And this is Rocky. Right. 
I feel like I've just gone 12 rounds with you, let me tell you. Let me read you something. Prohibition Grill Southern Cuisine. Chef Rocky strives for quality and freshness. Correct. Freshness? The soup from last week that was called Soup of the Day. Gloopy, under-seasoned. It wasn't even hot. It was just hideous. Big fan of that soup. Big fan of the soup. What I've just eaten has been an embarrassment. Pan-fried oysters, just solid cornmeal with no seasoning. It needs some form of seasoning. I didn't know that. You don't even know what soup of the day is. Can I talk to you about the pinwheel of salmon? Can you go and get me a pinwheel? Yes. Hurry up, please. Chef Ramsey, I like the pinwheel. I'm not asking you like it. Oh. You give your food 10 out of 10, so right. me talking to you about food, it's like, yeah, I'm talking to a brick wall behind you. Right. I liked it. I thought it looked nice and kind of unique and different. Kind of unique and different? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how many strips did you get out of a salmon? 14. Like, until I just looked at it, I didn't even think this was so small. Right. And even the bloodlines on there as well. Nasty. Chef to chef. Have you any idea how bad that makes you look? On decisions about how food is prepared, I believe in what they do back there. That's their thing, especially Rocky. Come on. Color greens, overcooked, tasteless mush. I thought they tasted great. They and were you know overcooked, what? though. You knew they were overcooked. Have right. you any idea how fucking deluded you sound? What? How can something be fucking delicious and overcooked? There's no such thing. Man, uh. are customers that stupid? Are you? No. Are you? No. Are you? No. And you are. Yes, sir. So. Why did you ask me here if your food's 10? Well, I was hoping that you could come here and help me get this business to the next level because I can't seem to do that on my own right now. How bad is your business currently? How much money per week are you losing? At least $2,000. So that's $8,000 a month. That's 100 grand a year. Does that not sink in anyone's fucking mind? I don't know what to say. I like the food. I think the food is great here. After only a short time in the restaurant, Chef Ramsay is shocked by how lazy Chef Rocky is and how clueless Rishi is. Can you get me some lipstick? Uh-huh. And before dinner service, there is one issue he wants to take care of right away. Prohibition grill. My ass. No more false advertising. He's putting tape over the grill. Excellent. I got a crab cake going out with a Caesar and a small salad. Where's Rishi, by the way? She's getting ready for belly dancing. Tonight? We're ready to go on the second check as well. Candace, you're up. Where was this? What? Cornbread. Huh? When was this cornbread made? That was made the other day, and we weren't even going to serve it. We just threw it back here because we weren't even going to serve it. You we just made, threw it. We, we Ooh, made that. Dennis, 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 big deep breath. You just made it. Made it the, the other, other day. Yeah. Threw it back here because you weren't serving it. Because, yeah, it got, bur it got burnt, and Rocky told me just go throw it in the back room for right now. I just feel that. Oh, I know. It's terrible. I don't know. It's pretty bad. Music, 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 music. You are kidding me. Five, six, seven, and. Are you fucking serious? I'm not joking, you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Close the doors. Put me off my dinner. Can't move. She's just in her own world, and she thinks that everybody's loving it. And as you look around, you can tell that people are confused. <laughs> Some even mortified. Chef Ramsay locked himself in the freezer to get away from the belly dancing. Oh, my God. 
is weird. Yeah. <laughs> belly dance. That was a belly flop. Following the impromptu belly dance. Kitchen, please. So this is pretty much rare, and they wanted a medium steak. There's a steady stream of undercooked dishes coming back to the kitchen. Back in the oven, please. Oh, no. No, no, no. Colleen. This is supposed to be medium. Oh, God. Oh, no. Come on. God. What is this? Rocky, could you put these steaks on uh, just a tiny bit more? All right, guys, this is just in the last five minutes. I don't know what's going on, but, you know, can someone get a grip? Please. Another medium refire. This is normal, all these complaints with temperatures on the meat. Mm -hmm. Especially on the steaks. Is that acceptable to you? No. People hate our food. So far, so good this evening. And she turns a blind deer, which frustrates us all, you know? Why does Rishi walk around like everything's just perfect and a big smile on her face? That's what she believes oh, no. it all is. What's wrong, darling? What's wrong? The ravioli's cold. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, the kitchen needs help. Lots. Is everything tasting good? Yeah. <laughs> the gravy feels like I got the, the bottom of the pot. OK, thanks for your comments. Um, I just want to let you know at this table right here, they both think that the gravy tastes like it came out of the bottom of the pan. They're really unhappy about that. Should I just go ahead and take that we back should, to the kitchen then? Yeah, it's your restaurant. Which yeah. table? Where would you? This table right Let's here. Let's deal with it now. Come okay. on. Um, my apologies. Madam, if you're not happy with it, I'd rather you didn't eat it. The sauce tastes like liver. We fire a fresh chicken for the lady yeah. with no sauce. Sorry about that. We'll get that going for you. Can you taste the gravy? I'm going to taste Please. it, yeah. It tastes really gritty to me. Where is it? Now I see, Where right here. It? Jeff, can you pass me that gravy? Everyone's complaining now about I the gravy. I see why they think it tastes like liver, because it's really gritty. What was it made? Gravy was made last week and frozen. Last week and frozen. Uh. <laughs> oh my god. <coughs> it's sour. All of you. Get any plate of gravy off the tables off now. Off the tables now. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Dry as anything. The meat's cooked and raw on the same shelf. Rocky, you got the ribs there. What's next to the ribs? Raw pork. Raw pork. Get Rishi, please. Rishi. Rule number one. Cross-contamination. Ex explain to Rishi. Never saw a cooked product next to a raw product. So just look at that. What is that there? Raw product. Raw pork. What's that there? Cooked ribs. Cooked ribs. And this here, what is this, guys? Oh, my god. It's trout. What is New that? New trout, old trout. Just feel how sticky that is on top. That's the old trout. And that there is the fresh one underneath, right? That we pulled today. Now you pulled today. What is that? Bread pudding. Bread pudding. Bread what? Oh, my god. Rocky, come on. When was that cooked? Saturday. What day is it today? Tuesday. Tuesday. And what we didn't sell on Saturday, what do you think should happen? Fantastic. Oh, my gosh. Stop. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry and I'm so disappointed, but whatever you're eating now, just stop. Stop. Dinner service at the Prohibition Grill has just gone from plain bad. What is that there? Raw product. What's that there? Cooked ribs. To downright dangerous. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever you're eating now, just stop. And Chef Ramsay has had enough. I am not going to stand here and watch this kitchen send you food that is A, cross-contaminated, B, reheated from frozen. It's an absolute embarrassment. Yeah, obviously not serving anything else. There won't be any more food coming to the table tonight. We're really sorry about this experience. We had a lot of really unsatisfied, unhappy guests tonight. And that hurts. Ridiculous. I can't help you one minute longer. Do you know why? Why? Because you, madam, cannot help yourself. Lazy chef. OK, well, this is the deal. First of all, I've known about Rocky being lazy for a really long time. I've called him out on it a thousand times. And you know what I get? This is what you get for how much you pay me. I don't make enough. This is, you That's know. That's not entirely accurate. Well, what? it is accurate. Like, he and I go around once a year about this exact thing, because he doesn't make the money that he wants to make. I like him so much in so many ways and so many things that he does. 
but he's not held to the same standard that everybody else is held to here by me because what am I going to do? I don't know how to come in here. I don't know how to fucking train anybody else. I so, don't know how to butch the meats. So, I don't know how so to do anything. So you fear losing a chef? Yes. That doesn't yes. care? Yes. That's ruining your business. There's some things Rocky is doing good. And every single time... What do I do a word with you? Because I, I, I can't fucking sit here and take this shit any longer. Ugh. I am not going to listen to excuses. You keep on telling me that he's good and he's... Well, because he's been here with me all these four years, and, and my feeling is is that he has the, the skills to do it. Why are you convinced? that he has the skills to do it. Because I don't know about that job, and he's been here since day one, and he has led me to believe. He has he's led me to believe. He has, he has, and intuitively, I've known it. You allowed him to take you hostage. I have. So you deserve what you get then, because you're not prepared to step up. No, I stepped up, I fired him two months ago. He was gone for a week in the kitchen. They didn't know how to do the order. They just didn't know. And then I brought him back again. I actually feel sorry for you. Do you know why? You're being used. Step up. Yeah. Get a grip. Yeah. Because time right now is not your friend. I'm done for tonight. Yeah. Chef Ramsay thinks he's unbelievably lazy, has got me over a barrel, and the fact that I allow him to be the kind of chef that he is here is unacceptable. Well, and he's gotten away with it for so long. Like, how, how is he going to change his behavior after this long? After shutting down the restaurant, Hello. Hi, ladies. Let's have a little seat over here. Chef Ramsay is completely bewildered. He's looking for some explanation, and he begins the day with Rishi and her staff. Let's be honest, last night was a disaster. Everyone agreed? Yeah, yes. absolutely. absolutely. And customers were absolutely at their wit's end. I mean, there was one table in the front there that had the dish refired three times. When was the last time that happened? I'd say it happens all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, Candice? Absolutely. What is the response from the chef? He usually takes it really personal mm -hmm. and thinks that they're wrong and the, food, right. and the food tastes just fine. What does that tell you? It's Rocky. He and I started here at the same time, yeah. and he was very Sorry. passionate. Uh, in the last two years, 30% no. maybe. Wow. Uh, last time I worked, got 15 orders. He goes outside behind the building. 15 orders, and your head chef is outside. Smoking. smoking. And I just don't feel like going outside to get him, so I text him. Do you think it's right that he should be outside and you have to text him to come in? Oh, God, no. No. And we have to supplement Rocky's income by tipping. On average, a week, We tip tips? about 3%. 3% of, of the food, food sales. sales. The head chef getting tips? He told me that that's what other people do in other restaurants, and that's fair. They put the food out to give the server the opportunity to what? earn the tip, so but they should deserve we, that. We've told her, though, that's not how it is in the industry. No, it's not. He's made me feel this way over time, that I owe him. Why do you owe him? Because I'm afraid that I can't make this happen without him, because... So you because think I not... just I feel like I don't have the experience to know what to do so, if I don't have someone who... So you think he's not replaceable? Right. So how many people feel that this restaurant would be better off without Rocky? Sorry. Why do you support Rocky the way you're doing? I'm just scared to take that chance. Rishi, this is crazy. I know. I don't know why I'm like that. I'm not like that in any other places this in my life. This is crazy, my darling. You should not be put in this awful, vulnerable situation and be beholden to a chef that's tearing you apart. Rishi is completely afraid of change. She doesn't like to change her hair. She doesn't like to change her house. She doesn't like to change anything. Do you mind if I just talk to Rishi alone, please?
I'm just scared because I, because <laughs> when I when I did this, I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. And then last night when you just stood up and you told Rocky, just stop making excuses. This is wrong. You're lazy. I just have been so scared to do that. I appreciate your honesty. I can really feel, especially today, that you care. But when I first arrived, you were almost tiptoeing over the issues as opposed to tackling them head on. I know. But with Rocky, just even if he steps up right now, who's to say what's going to happen? I can't even tell you. But why let the misery go on? I don't want to. I'm just so scared. <laughs> Help me. I'm here. I'm here. Okay? I'm sorry. I'm so upset. Come on. I'm here. I'm going to get this thing sorted. Okay. I was too scared to make that decision with Rocky to not have any anyone there that could say, okay, well, let's right. do this. Okay, <laughs> no, I need to find someone else. But I'm just afraid that there's not going to be somebody else's. That, because he has me believing that, like, I, know. I don't pay enough to have, I really Listen do. to me and listen very carefully. <laughs> I will do all I can to find you a chef. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is your decision, your business, your future, and your money. You need to take responsibility. I can't do that for you, OK? I your know way. it has to be done. Why would I want to go forward with someone who's sabotaging my business? Don't worry, OK? Thank you so much. I'll see you shortly. I'm getting on the phone. Okay. Stand strong, OK? okay? It's the right thing to do, to let Rocky go. After a heart-to-heart -heart with Chef Ramsay, Rishi now finally understands what is the main problem of the restaurant. Oh, Rish. OK, so I'm going to fire Rocky today because Chef Ramsay's going to help me find someone became very clear to me that Rocky's not going to change. Even if he says he's going to step up and blah, 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 he's not going to change. That's the right thing to do. It's your business. It's your livelihood. It's, it's your life. So now what? Oh, fuck. Hello. Hi. Hi. <sighs> What's going on? Just said, we'll get up. Okay. going out the door. Okay, so um, I don't want to. I don't want to beat around the bush about it. Unfortunately, I'm letting you go. It just things haven't changed, even after our last reconciliation. Things still haven't changed. I'm sorry. Yeah, I. Uh, I understand. You know, I've gotten complacent, and uh, I realize that. And. Uh, Sorry I had to come to this. I'm sorry. I'm so relieved to know that I don't have to feel like I'm held hostage anymore. I have the courage now to make the changes necessary. <sighs> How'd it go with Rocky? You know, it went really well. Um, Rocky took responsibility for what happened. He didn't try to make me feel like it was my fault or... Right or anything. Good. I felt like a boss. I Good. felt empowered. I felt like Good. I'm making the right decision, and Good. I'm going to make it right now. Yeah. Let's get the rest of the staff. OK. And, uh, you and I are going to have a little fun. Right, team, I want all of you just to go in the kitchen. <laughs> Let's go. OK, do you have any trousers or uh, jeans or nope. no? That's it. That's it. Wow. <laughs> you're, like a, you're like a naked chef. I know, right? <laughs> When was the last time you actually cooked a dish in here? Never. You've never cooked in here? Ever? 
Ever? No. Wow. You should never, ever be intimidated by the kitchen. Right. With Rocky, I never felt invited to come into my kitchen. I felt like that was his place, and my place was my job. Nothing to worry about whatsoever. To be really honest, please. I love to cook. Seriously? Yeah. Seriously. That is good to know. You know that. Yeah. Why didn't you tell me that yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> right, first on, slow-cooked duck salad. A little touch of olive oil. Just a touch. We've got some fresh herbs. Frisée salad. Now, your turn. Take your spoon and just baste over the duck legs, please. Tilt the pan and baste. Nice. There we are. Doesn't she look great in the kitchen, by the way? Yes, she does. Huh? <laughs> Good. There you go. How's that now? Way better. Good. Hold the bone. Sit that. Nice. Perfect. Yay! Thank you. She just cooked those <laughs> dishes there with me, like a boss, like an owner. That's what you've got to do when you've taken the responsibility of opening a restaurant. It's about having a presence. Right, I want you all to get a knife and fork, and we're going to sit down and have a bite to eat. It's amazing how just being in the kitchen with Chef Ramsay, I felt really empowered. Now, not... this is a 10. <laughs> this is a 10. <laughs> I am not going to be afraid anymore. <laughs> I love it. After a great deal of research, Chef Ramsay and his team worked through the night to transform the restaurant from a southern-style grill into a gastropub. Hey, good morning. How are we? Good. Good. Now I have some very, very exciting changes to show you. Woo! Right. Take off your blindfolds. Oh! Progress and Grill is no longer a grill. Welcome to your new gastro pub. Ah! We brought out the texture of those amazing bricks. The chevrons give it that modern feel. Look at the bar. We brightened up the whole room with that beautiful red lacquered bar. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's a good time for a change. Yeah. I'm so excited right now here in Everett. Nobody has a building that looks like this. It's beautiful in here. I love it. Rishi, yesterday I made you a promise that I would find you a chef. <gasps> chef Ramsay. This chef oh, has cooked for over 20 years in the Northwest. Oh, God. I'm going to introduce you to Tyler Pelegri. <laughs> chef! Ah! How are you, sir? Let me tell you something about this young man. He is opening up his very own cool, hip, amazing restaurant in downtown Seattle, Radiator. Yep. Now, until then, he's going to be here with you, Rishi. And after he's gone, he'll make sure there's a chef replacing him that is up to the standards of what both you and Chef requires. Excited? Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Good. Now I feel like I have a real chance for real success. I'm so grateful to have you here. In keeping with the new gastropub theme... Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Yum. Chef Ramsay has designed a menu that can be easily executed in Rishi's small kitchen. Oh, my, oh my gosh. God. Oh, Chef Ramsay, I'm so excited. Good. I want you all to dig in, have a taste. Here you go, honey. Thank you. I'm going to start oh over my here. Gosh. Oh, my God. That was amazing. With the food and the decor now looked after, Chef Ramsay has one more makeover to reveal, and that is Rishi. Wow, you look amazing. Thanks. I love it. How's my hair look? Obviously, it's about time. Rishi's attire, it was a little bit inappropriate. <laughs> With Chef Tyler now at the helm, new systems have been implemented. Yeah, and I'm right on top. Good. And that includes Rishi taking a lead role as expediter. When I fire entrees, I take and stick them here. Perfect. Fire left one, please. Left one heard. To spread the word about the new prohibition, Chef Ramsay invited influential bloggers. That bourbon glaze is fantastic. I'm absolutely amazed and so proud of Rishi for taking charge of her restaurant. Put your right hand up. <laughs> yes. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I will no longer be hosting belly dancers. I will no longer be hosting belly dancers. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Good night, my darling. Okay, good Take night, care. Chef Ramsay. Thank you. Thank you.
the knowledge that he's given me to empower me to be a real restaurant owner. I've never had that. <sighs> this has to be one of the most unusual kitchen nightmares ever. Rishi had no idea that her loyalty towards Rocky was actually ruining her business. Thankfully, she saw the light, stepped up, and made a very, very brave decision. More importantly, she now understands the key ingredients to running a successful dining room. Belly dancing is not one of them. Soul food, belly dancing in the Northwest. Wow. In the weeks that followed, the one and only gastropub in Everett, Washington is a hit. Onion soup, crab cakes. And for the first time since she opened. All right, and the salmon for you, my dear. Rishi truly feels she is in control of her very own restaurant. I'm so excited that Everett has a, a restaurant like this. I know. Nashville, Tennessee, the epicenter of country music and home to Chappie's Restaurant, a Cajun eatery owned by John Chappie Chapman and his wife, Star. Look pretty. I started when I was about two and a half with my mother in the kitchen. I was the one that would put the crabs in the pot. <laughs> Thank you for coming. We opened our first Chappies in a little town called Long Beach, Mississippi in 1984. One of the two. And it was a huge overnight success. But in 2005, after Hurricane Katrina destroyed the restaurant, Chappie and Star were forced to relocate to Nashville. Chappie, my table doesn't like the crab cakes or the turtle soup. That's the Nashville folks we know and love. I think people in Nashville have a problem with New Orleans cuisine. They hate it all. <laughs> oh, well, these people don't know. Fun. I definitely don't think our issue is the people of Nashville. The food is in the back. It's overcooked and it tastes fishy. The issue is more chappy. Don't argue. Move on. Chappy is extremely hard-headed. There's nothing wrong with my food. Yeah. Both came back. If Chappie would listen to feedback, the business would be doing much better. <laughs> it's a barrel Monday. That's what I need working. The menu, it's like a book. I do want to let you know about some appetizers that we're featuring tonight that are not listed. Not to mention the 15, 16 things we have to recite. We have crab cakes in here. Swordfish piccata. We also have our blackened shrimp. Two lobster tails that stacked on top of one another twice. I think that's it. That's a lot to remember. I said itchy fair, right? <laughs> <laughs> I can't see how he, he makes any money. We do not have the volume to be able to sell all that stuff. Chappies definitely needs an update. It's not 1984 anymore. They called, they want their wallpaper back. Chappie on 120. The lady did not like the salad dressing. What was the matter with it? She said the blue cheese dressing is too thin. Let's just get her out of here. Yes, Chappie. Everybody thinks they know better. So it's my job to make sure it stays the way it's supposed to be. What are y'all doing? I need to know. We're taking the prime rib off of his check because he didn't like it and he returned he it. He didn't like the other one either. He sent them both back, the fish too. John, John, for Chappies to be saved, I think we need Chappie to change. Why waste my time? And it's not about your pride or your experience. It's about doing what you need to do to help your business evolve and go to the next level. I don't know what's happened. Ultimately, the success of Chappies relies on Chappie. Oh, jeez. Wow. What is that? Ghastly. Hello. Hi, welcome. Wow, what an entrance <laughs> that was. That mannequin's fucking scary now. Jeez. Oh, it spooked me now. <laughs> First name is? I'm Nicole. Uh, nice to see you. Wow, this place is like a museum in here. Mm-hmm. Huh? Yes, got a lot of uh, New Orleans wow. paraphernalia everywhere. Chappie and Star, actually, his wife, had a restaurant on the Gulf Coast. Wow, wow, wow. Is that him there with a the big chef's hat? That is, yeah. Wow. Where is the man? Uh, he is actually in the kitchen. I'd like to have a quick word with him. Sure. Let me go check. Thank you. I'll be right back. Oh, wow, what's that? It looks like a costume that Elton John would wear. Is that Chappie? Wow. Hey, Chappie. Uh, Hi, Chef, honey. Chef Ramsey just got here, and before he sits, he wants to know if you have a second to chat with him. It'll, just, it'll be just a few minutes. OK. He's going to be right out. Yeah, excellent. <clears throat> yeah, 
Yeah, he'll, he's going to be right out, he told me. Is he alone in the kitchen? Does he have any assistance? Mm -hmm. No, he's he's got some back there. He's uh, I think there's three men back there with him. Um, wow. Let me go check and see uh, how yeah. he's doing, okay? Excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are we getting close, Chappie? Yeah. Okay, he is right up in the front. I'm gonna get a glass of water, then I'll go meet Darth Vader. Uh. Wow. How are you? Gordon, nice to meet you. Those pants are uh, I'm a hot pepper, brother. Wow, wow, wow. Throw back to the 80s? It's just something I've always worn. Wow, look at that thing there. That's huh? when I was cute and young. Cute and young? How long you ago was that? You remember those days? I do. <laughs> well, just take me back to the beginning. How long have you been here? Since uh, June of 06. Right. After Katrina. Mm -hmm. What's the comparison between here and Mississippi? Mississippi was kind of a uh, never ending, it was like 23 years. So it was a long time in successful business mm -hmm. and doing what I do. Amazing. And here, talk me through the first two years, business wise. Kind of a rough uh, beginning here in Nashville. Of course, we were the new guys in town, people are afraid of us. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't do traditional Nashville food, no. burgers and pulled pork and no. chicken wings. We don't do that. So no. we, we do the New Orleans food. So a lot of people were afraid, and this is what we're trying to deal with still to this day. <laughs> and here, you're taking a play on fine dining? Uh, it's it's it, more like I'm taking a play on casual fine dining. Yeah, but I mean, look at those napkins. Yeah. yeah. Um, waiters, bow ties. I mean, it doesn't strike me as somewhere casual. I mean, it's quite formal, huh? Uh, no. Right, OK. My god, I've been doing this a long time. I've eaten all over the world. I see what people do. I don't think I'm so far off. And how would you rate your food currently out of 10? What would you give it? I wouldn't put it out of it. I didn't think it was delicious. Just asking. So I give them a 10 every time I do it, you know? OK, well, let me sit down, have a little look around the menu, and uh, get up to speed with your, uh, your style of cooking. OK. Thank you. I think they have a table over there for you. Yes. I think my food is the best New Orleans cuisine in Nashville, hands down. So I can't figure out why people haven't come and enjoy. All right. I was going to put my chappy hat on. <laughs> Well, we actually get a lot of people to do that. <laughs> uh-huh. Little chappies. OK, so this right. is our lunch selection right Thank here. You. Wow, it's a big lunch menu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dinner menu is even larger. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you. Absolutely. Wow. <clears throat> Hello. How are you? Fantastic. And yourself? I'm so happy to be here. Well, welcome to Chappies. My name is TJ. TJ. Nice to meet you. Good to see you. We have, like, 10 different specials. What? As well as uh, five different appetizers. 15 specials? Yes. On top of this? Yeah. And they change every day? It's a lot to take in. No eggs, actually. They stayed exactly the same. Huh? They've been the same since I've been here. Wow. So you know this um, 8 95 crawfish? I saw it's on there twice. It's the same on the lunch menu as it is on the dinner menu, only yeah. the price changes. So for lunch menu, the crawfish to Tuve is 8 95 How much is it for dinner on the special? Uh, $29.95. So it jumps $20. And what changes? Nothing. TJ, come on. The price jumps three and a half times for the special and the dinner, and nothing changes. You don't even throw me an extra couple of tails in there. Shame on you, TJ. Well, not me. I, I... Is that just for the cool fish, or is that for all the specials? It's pretty much, it's pretty standard. Wow. So, let's start off with, please, and the fried green tomatoes, please. OK. The chicken and sausage gumbo as well, please. OK. And I've got to go for that steak and lobster rocket. Very good. Thank you. Wow. Fried green tomatoes. Thank you. Fried green. The rest of his order is going in now. Hello. Oh, hello. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Nice to meet you, Star Chapman. Star, nice to see you. Please, take a seat. Well, welcome. Uh, thank you. I'm happy to be here. My first time in Nashville. Really? How hey, do you look. like it? Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. We're happy to have you. Are you involved in business daily? Always. Oh, really? Yes, um, hands yeah. on. I work the front of the house. I work the office. Wow. I wear many hats. Uh-huh. Have and to. Your husband, of course, Chaffee. Um, how long have you been together? 29 years. 29 years. Yes, wow. sir. Does he listen to your input? Not always. Not always. Why? Because he's a hard-headed man. I think he's uh, set in his ways. But when it's not working, you'd adapt. Exactly. Looking at our menu, I think it's mm -hmm. too big. I think it needs to be downsized. It's too much. You've got to be able to adapt and change. It seems like you've hit a wall. Absolutely. That's, and that's why, why you're here. Mm -hmm. 
I think that's going to be the, the key. I believe Chef Ramsay is the only person who could turn Chappie around. For me, it's like trying to blow air into a balloon with a hole in it. All right, the uh, fried green tomatoes appetizer. Mm -hmm. Is that parmesan on there? It is. And crawfish tails and hollandaise sauce. Thanks, TJ. You're welcome. I'm dying to taste these okay, uh, fried good. green tomatoes. Well, enjoy. Bon Thank appetit. you very Thank you. Well, how would you rate the food, by the way? Excellent. Excellent. Mm -hmm. I just think it needs to be modernized, revamped, and the menu. She says it's excellent, and yet it needs to be modernized and revamped. And that doesn't sound like excellent. Because surely if it was excellent, you wouldn't have to do any of those things. It's bland. All right, what do we think of the fried green tomatoes? Uh, yeah, bland. Uh, that hollandaise sauce is almost just like a sort of a melted butter. Yeah, it doesn't even taste of anything. Sorry about that. Not your fault. Right, next up would be the chicken and sausage gumbo. Gumbo. Thank you. You're very welcome. You said your hollandaise sauce was extremely bland, just tastes like a strong butter sauce. It's very good. When we bring a dish back to the kitchen, he acts like it's an insult, not that there's possibly something wrong with the actual dish. Gumbo. Wow. It looks like Chappie took a crappie in my gumbo. It's like a puddle. It's just watery, really watery. That is fucking disgusting. If this dish was done right, it could be a game changer, but right now, it's a game ender. TJ, is there a problem in the kitchen? It's not even hot. It's not hot. No? I mean, it's just like lukewarm and gloopy. See the skin? Yeah. Very watery. There's just no flavor anywhere. It's just bland. Gotcha. We'll get it fixed. We'll bring the next one. Thank you. OK. Wow. Shabby, first of all, this is cold. It's just absolutely filled with water. Filled with water? I thought I drained it pretty well. Hey, it's everything. Uh-oh. He hadn't liked anything I've done so far. All right, garnish it up. Steak and lobster rocket. Steak and lobster rocket. Thank you. That's a very funny looking lobster. Seriously, how much is this dish? $36.95. Gee, come on, stop. And why is the filet butterfly like that? And cut like that. He cuts it off and then pounds it thin. He beats the crap out of a fillet to tenderize it when it's the most stunning cut. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> Do you mind? I'll try it. No. Please. <laughs> Come on. That is chewy. The lobster I couldn't even eat. As I was trying to bite down on it, it was bouncing back. Steak and lobster rocket. Someone needs a fucking rock out of his ass to wake up. Oh, my god. Robert, don't swallow that one. Do you need a napkin? <laughs> Maybe Chappie needs to get on a fucking rocket. A rocket back to New Orleans to see how it's properly done. Fast. He said the dish is just a mess. I don't want to throw it down his throat if he doesn't want it. Well, he couldn't even get through the steak. It was all gristle. It was gristle? Yeah. What do you mean gristle? Gristle and chewy. OK, well, it's like butter. Is it not? Chef Ramsay's a dumbass. You know, if there's something that I think is absolutely wrong, he doesn't know what he's talking about, I'm going to tell him. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. After enduring Chappie's flavorless Cajun cuisine, can you take me through the kitchen, please? I sure can. Chef Ramsay heads to the kitchen, looking for an explanation. I don't know where to start. I was so excited to come here, but I'm disappointed. Did you cook everything? Uh-huh. The fried green tomatoes, what are you coating them in? Corn flour. Corn flour. A little seasoning. For me, there was no seasoning there. It was bland. And holiday sauce was just melted butter. Yeah. Steak and lobster, rocket. The lobster was like rubber. And when you have a $36 entree, but you don't expect to see filet pounded. 
That's the last thing you ever do. I've never met a chef anywhere in the world that pounds out a filet. Why would you pound something that is tender? Just the technique of what we do, just shaping it. So it fits, it stacks. It's not clay, it's meat. The chicken and sausage gumbo, bland. But you know what? Forget the seasoning. It wasn't even hot, it was lukewarm. Well, I sent it out as soon as I did it. So it was actually bubbling hot. Well, yeah, I'm not exaggerating, it wasn't bubbly hot. <laughs> I don't find it funny. Okay. Can I have a word on my own with the owners, please? You guys get back to whatever you be doing. I'm not going to say this in front of your staff. Okay. You're a joke. The food was disgusting. Everything was off? Everything. And that's without factoring in the prices. Going through each and every dish, there was a, a consistent pattern. It's like you've shut shop up and gone home. Chappie is not very happy. You're done. Are you done? Of what? Just cooking in general. No. That's you at your best. Pardon? That's you at your best. Kind of. Really? Uh, I've toned down some spices for Nashville. When we first opened, people complained. Too oh, salty, every too spicy. Too, too much heat. I'm not looking for excuses. Well, I, I, you know, what can I say? You asked me to help. But I'm not going to sit here and blow smoke up your asses and say, I don't want amazing. you to blow uh, anything back. up my whatever. So let's not go here and go through yeah. this. You've said your piece. Let's move on. Yeah. You've given up. Given up what? OK, I'm going to get some fresh air. Me too. Do it. OK. Wow. Uh, Mark, how does the line work? Fry cook. Fry cook. Who's frying tonight? For real. Chappie. Yeah. Frying tonight. OK, great. Oysters. Wow. Yeah. Chappie, they stay out like that? It should be Tim. You are kidding morning. me, aren't you? Oh, no. I got my thermometer in the chicken. Wow. You check the tip. Uh, listen, I'm not that dumb now. You just put ice in there to check the temperature. Ah, I know. Let's throw some ice and I'll check it. I want to look good. Right now, we got the first ticket. We got a grill grouper working. Yeah. Chappie, you fry the grouper with the beef? We blacken everything in the same pan, yes. What happens if the customer was a pescatarian? A pescatarian? Yeah, they only eat fish. And they don't expect to eat their fish with meat juices. I've never heard of one, to tell you the truth. Oh, my God. Wow. Can't believe that's going out. Uh, Tom, turn me to that table. Thank you. Sorry for interrupting. Are you pescatarian? I am. Can I borrow you for two seconds? Would you mind? <laughs> Thank you. Chappie, have you got two seconds? It's one of your customers. Really? Yeah. Let me explain something really important, because I'm not fucking around now. This lady is a pescatarian. Strictly fish. What I'm trying to explain, because you're not listening, is that her fish was cooked in there along with the beef. It's not a general practice. It's just the things you never do. It's the golden rule, but it's totally oblivious. Do you get sick on meat? Oh, very. I'm sorry. I'll make sure that's in a pan of its own, as it should be, and cooked properly. Okay. I My apologies. That. Thank you. Gets cooked in the same stuff that the meat's been cooked in. Oh! Oh my and God! It's disgusting back there. Why is oh? Why is mayonnaise that colour? I thought that was a jar of mustard. What's the date on this? So oh, by 27th of February 2010. Expired three years ago. My God. What's that? How old is that? Raw beef and cooked beef. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. As I always say, everything you need to know about a chef is in his fridge. Shrimp. Just stuck there. Sat. Absolutely stinking. Oh my god. Look at that. What in the fuck is that? There's a shrimp hanging down there. That's all mold. Unbelievable. Bloody hell. It's dinner service at Chappie's, and Chef Ramsay has just made a shocking discovery. Oh my god. That's all mold. Bloody hell. 
what may be the filthiest fridge he has ever seen. What a mess. Do you have a minute urgently, yes, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. Chappie, can I have you for one minute, please? And this fridge is an absolute mess. I have never seen that, ever. And I want to know, what the hell are you doing? Something must have spilled. Something must have spilled. Can you stop bullshitting for once and just try to get real? When are these from? Just out of interest. Those are fresh potatoes. They are fresh today. No, they're not fresh today. Oh, my good gosh. Just touch that. What is that? It's warm. Have you any idea what happens to sauce when it's covered and it's hot? Tomorrow morning is what? Sour. Sour, thank you. And when is this from? This is a cake that we... This is a cake. You can't even answer me now. How old is that? I don't know. Oh, my good gosh. See the mold in these things? Yes. And this one here, look. See that there? Ooh. You stop. You're not getting anything. 86 it. Come here, you. Come here. Yeah, have a look down there. What do you see? Mold. Mold. You want me to let you take something else out of here? No. Now, fuck off. Yes, sir. Have you any idea how long a shrimp needs to stay inside the fridge to get that much mold on there? No. Is it between the... Is it between the what? I don't know what it is, where it was. All night, you're just deflecting. How about some form of honesty? He needs some help, obviously. He needs some help? Are you serious? I'm very serious you're about... You're one foot away from that shit down there. Which he obviously didn't know was down there. What? Well, do you think he would have let it stay down there if he knew it was there? Oh, so he couldn't see it? Obviously not. You have raised the bar. In fact, you right now are a legend, because you have raised the bar so fucking high that you've taught every chef in the world how not to cook. Congratulations. I feel horrible. That's a mess. Oh. Seeing that fridge was beyond belief. I, I could not believe it. I had no idea. I just am speechless. Star, you and me for a second. What is going on? I have no idea. I don't go in the walk-in cooler. I don't manage it. It's not my territory. I never even thought to look in it. I am mortified. I am embarrassed You've by got that. Every right to defend your husband, but I'm not here to sugarcoat. I understand. And you're Gordon, right to and be I mortified. Don't expect you to but sugarcoat I need it. some form of understanding. You cannot perform like that. You must see the problem, surely. I surely do. What's happened to him? I don't know what's happened to him. If I knew, I could help him work through it. I can't start to work with someone that's given up. And right now, he's shown me everything to confirm he's done just that. And honestly, hand on heart, I think I'm too late. Oh, jeez. It doesn't seem like he cares. No, he does care. How do you know? I don't know. Let me go talk to him. What changed? What changed him from being so passionate and energetic into almost apathetic? I love you. I love you, too. Have you given up? You still love to cook? Yeah. Then show him you want it. OK. I know I'm ready. And whatever it takes, Chappie's going to have to come up and meet me, and let's do this together. Wow. Ah, oh, fucking hell. I'm totally mortified and embarrassed. I know. So, but show some life. Show that you care. Oh, we have done all of this for nothing. I think Chef Ramsay nailed it. And I feel a little let down. He's going through the motions, but he's not feeling the juice anymore. At last night's dinner service, Chef Ramsay was horrified at the bad practices. Sit down, please. This morning, he has gathered the staff to see if he can uncover any other major issues with the restaurant. Yeah, I came here to help, but my biggest concern right now is Chappie. Mm-hmm. 
I can't think of a more dangerous job when you've got an owner at the helm that doesn't care. Have you ever tried to talk to him? You even bother to ask him a question, and you are pissing him off. The other day, our guest wanted to know what was in a sauce, so I asked him. He said, why the fuck do you want to know? The condescending and the rudeness and the yelling where the customers can hear. That's really, really bad. I feel like I always get yelled at a lot just for everything. He shuts you down, snaps at you. You're not even allowed to speak to him until he speaks to you. Is he always that condescending? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He almost takes everybody's at there. He thinks the waiters, all we care about is our money and nothing else. Everybody's stealing from him. Everybody's against him. Yeah. Everybody. What's it like dealing with complaints in the kitchen? He usually gets upset. Yeah, he gets angry. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this. He'll taste it. He blames everything on us or the guests. Give me an example. I've had a coconut cake that was returned to me. I brought it back to Chappie. He dug it out of the trash can. What? Went back and asked the guy what was wrong with it. From the trash? Not good. Is he different now that I'm here? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. In what way? He's calmer. He's calmer. He's calmer, yes. I appreciate everybody's honesty. This is about getting better, let me tell you. So as difficult as it may have been, I want you to say what you've said to me, to the man himself. No matter what happens, I've got your back. So be confident, be honest. For me to tell Chappie what I'm feeling and what's been going on, it's, it's definitely nerve wracking. Here they are. I don't know what he's gonna do. I don't know if he's gonna fire me or how he's gonna accept it. Chappie is usually a person who flies off the handle. They have some things to say. Susan, kick it off, please. The main thing, Chappie, is just communicating. So we're on the same page. Russ. I want to preface what I have to say to both of you that I love you both. I love this restaurant. Russell, I love the love. Please Go tell ahead. me. Please tell me. Chappie, you're condescending, you're rude, and you're abusive. Everybody feels that. I don't think anybody wants to say it. And many times you lose your temper and customers can hear you. It's hard for us to work in that condition. It seems to me as though you don't give a shit about us as a team out here, that you think we're all against you, that we don't have your back. And I want you to know that we do have your back. We would love to have some support back from you. It's just hard that you don't trust anyone. If you don't trust your staff, then don't fucking hire them. Derek. When I first started working, I was selling the black and red fish to everybody, but I found out later that it was why. And ethically, as a server, you're asking me to go out and lie to these people every night. Is that true? It's true. You know, it's just not right. Why'd you do that? Why'd you swap that fish out and put He's them? He's trying to substitute. No, stop, stop, stop being dishonest with customers and putting them in the firing line. If he gets called out, it's your doing. I just wish you would, like, listen to us a little bit. Anytime I've brought up an idea or even try to ask you a question, I'm wasting your time. Whoa. I try to have you back. You're fantastic. I'm directing this more towards Chappie. A lot of things have to change. <clears throat> I appreciate everything you say. And you're right on target. Chappie, do you find this kind of feedback from your team helpful. I do. It does get tough. And if I was negative to you of, of a personal event, I apologize. It wasn't meant to hurt. Sometimes I get off the edge, too. I'm so blessed that this has happened because nothing was going to change unless we went all the way down there, put the light on it, looked at it, and said, whoa, let's fix this. We have slacked off for quite some time, but we'll get back to it. I hope Chappie can change. I know sometimes they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but I'm hoping that you can. Chef Ramsay still remains unconvinced that Chappie has seen the error of his ways. Sir, have you heard of the restaurant Chappies? No. Yeah. So he has provided Chappie and Star with a fully equipped stakeout vehicle so they can monitor his interaction with the locals. Hello. How are you? Good nice to see you. You like Cajun? Oh, we yes. love Cajun. Have you heard of Chappies? Yes. You have heard of yes, Chappies? Have. Good. Have you been there? Yes, a couple of times. A couple of times. Um, tell me the experience, please. Being on 
Fallon show very wants to spend all his time and money in promoting himself. He had the A2K when we went and probably it's one of the worst dishes you've yeah, had. It tastes a little burnt. A little bit burnt. Wow. Yeah. I appreciate your honesty. Absolutely. Thank you, my darling. Thank you so much. Have you heard of Chappies, the restaurant? I have not. You haven't heard it. Thank you. How are you? Have you heard of Chappies? I have. Good, yeah. good, good, good. Have you been to Chappies? I have been. I didn't feel as real authentic Cajun. Looking yeah. for etouffee and andouille, good oysters and shrimp. Simple oh, stuff. Spicy. They have that kind of food there. Did you try it? Uh, I, what I tried was not great. No. Yeah. I eat better Cajun food on the Cajun food truck that rolls around. The food quality is so far. And for the price point, it's yes. just, I, I think it's ridiculous. I, I wouldn't mind to pay $30 to $40 for a good entree, but it wasn't good. It's, it's not authentic Cajun. Bad food, wow. bad atmosphere, really? bad hat. I'm here to help fix that restaurant. Will you bear with me? Yes. And give it one more shot? Yes. I appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. OK. Were you listening? Absolutely. Yeah. Tough to watch. I agree. It is tough to watch. You what think you're doing something that they want, and then they don't. So it's a good eye awakening, an epiphany of what we need to do. Let's show more quality. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's, 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 let's show. Time to move forward. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Well, when you hear people talking on the street and they don't see you listening, they'll say things that maybe they wouldn't say in front of you. It was an eye opener. Coming up. Chappy. Listen to me. No. All eyes are on Chappie. I need you to step up to the plate or go home. Will he finally lead his team to a successful service? How long, Chappie? Almost ready. Or will his customers leave disappointed again? Chappie, stop what you're doing. Stop! That's coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. That'll be one pain of my ass gone. After setting Chappie, hopefully on the path to change, Chef Ramsay and his team work through the night on a major renovation. Morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Get ready for some big changes. Let's get on with it. <laughs> Please remove your blindfolds. <gasps> oh! Oh! Oh, my oh, my God. God. Oh, my God. Welcome to the new Chappies. That's nice. Look at that. How awesome. incredibly cool. Gone are those tacky, dated yellow walls. Now, it's comfortable, modern, much more warm and inviting. Yeah. We got rid of a lot of the chairs and replaced them with pews, so it gave that sort of intimate, sort of family feel. So much better. I love it. Take a look at this wall. Mm -hmm. We have reclaimed wood from a local barn and then added artistic photos. Uh -huh. I'm sure quarter. you recognize the French oh, Quarter there. We got rid of all the clutter from Mardi Gras, including <laughs> Miss Cleo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the ambiance that Nashville wants. Yeah. And it still plays homage to the home of Cajun cuisine. Sam, how do you feel? I, 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 I. <laughs> Are you happy, my darling? Absolutely. You like it? Yes. Perfect. It's it is absolutely, absolutely stunning. I love it. Everything's so fresh, so clean, so modern. It just oozes New Orleans charm. Do we have a happy chappy? It's very, very nice. <laughs> it's not my style. But I was just kind of, kind of grin, bear it, move on. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. Now, as big as the decor change was, the menu change is even bigger. Let's go through the menu from top to bottom. Chef Ramsay has modernized and reduced the menu from 100 dishes to 22. First of all, that is the only page. Yes! <laughs> yes! Let's start off with the top. Shrimp and grits, done with Creole seasoning, onions, and tomato. Delicious. Next to that, blackened yeah. redfish, served with citronelle and a herb salad. And what do we do when we run out of redfish, Chappie? It's 86. 86. Yes. That's right. <laughs> so don't even ask for it. Fried chicken, served with apple butter. Delicious mm. apple butter. Absolutely delicious. Chappie, mm. you've gone quiet. I'm thinking, how are we going to do it? <sighs> Let me tell you something. Your cooks have been here since early this morning. They have been under the guidance of a great chef that I brought here, Chris Fox. Chris. Good morning. Hi, Good morning. Good morning. This young man has been cooking for over 15 years. He has the most amazing wealth of experience. Wonderful. 
I paid for Chris to be here, to really implement these standards after I have gone. I think Chef Chris is such a blessing. Chappie's gonna get a chance to work side by side with this gentleman. So there are no excuses, okay? There's something else I need to bring in. Uniform. Oh, wow! Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. The uniforms are great. Now it's casual, and this whole new image, it's, it's going to be fantastic. It feels appropriate. No white shirt, no bow tie, no black pants. And talking about pants, one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> when you're looking the parts. There goes the party hat and the clown pants. I love it. Uh, listen, what I'd like you all to do now is to dig in and taste the food. Oh, it's my good. gosh. That pork chop is ridiculous. Oh, my god. There is no comparison between Chappie's old food and Chappie's mm. new food. The recipes are there, the flavor is there, but I'm not totally convinced that he's happy. I think he's still, like, got all these thoughts, like, pondering and wondering. So, uh, we'll see how that goes. Mmm! Mm. Okay, that side down. Push nice and flat. After more training on the new menu with Chef Ramsay and Chef Chris. Get it really super charred, right? You'll have beautiful marks. Look great. Got it. All the tools are there for Chappie to have a successful relaunch. I think I'm going to do the grilled Angus it's steak, okay? Yeah, I actually want to try the, uh, the crab cake. It looks crab awesome. Cake. All right, thanks, guys. Fire 114. Two pork chops, two Angus steaks, one medium, one mid-rare. Uh, uh, Chappie. Call back, please. Or Chapper. Hers. Serious, please, yeah? I got you. Chappie, Chris is expediting. He's going to tell you what to do. Just do it. How long on these steaks? How long, Chappie? Almost ready. Fucking hell, Chris. Like, what does almost mean? Like, five seconds, two seconds, three seconds, one second? Give me a time, please. Chappie, I'm not asking for the fastest kitchen. I just want a little bit of callback. Yes, chef. No, chef. Uh, a little bit of liveliness in here a little bit. <laughs> Fucking hell. Here's your medium rare. I need a two pork chops. Where's the pork chop, please? I need those pork chops desperately. Chappie, you get in the game a little bit, please? They're in the oven. They should have been put in the oven a while ago, though. Yeah? They've been in. It's got to be quicker than that. Fuck me. We haven't said anything yet. It's almost like we've gone to sleep. As Chappie struggles with the new menu, the question is, is it because it's new, or is it because he's not thrilled about serving it? I have such a hard time serving a plate like that. Whatever the case may be, customers are starting to get impatient. Let's go. I need those chops. We already look like jerks. Wow. I need 114. I need 129. I'm also ready for 110. Oh, my god. If Chappie would listen, it would be so much better. Chappie. Chappie, listen to me. Something you're not very good at doing. Stop what you're doing. Stop! I need 114. I need 129. It's relaunch night, and Chappie is not responding to Chef Chris. We haven't said anything yet. <laughs> and Chef Ramsay knows he has to do something to save the service. Chappie, listen to me. Something you're not very good at doing. Come here a minute. This is it now. I understand. No, no, but, but if you understand, I need to hear you. I do. I cannot deliver any more. I need you to step up to the plate and run your restaurant. Got it. Either do it or go home. Got it. Let's go. Let's go. He's not good at listening, that one. Fire 110. Pork chops, shrimp and grits. Chappie, don't ignore that ticket there. 110. Fuck. I need those pork chops. You want me to butterfly them? Do not butterfly them. How long are they? It's going to be a couple minutes. At least three minutes, four minutes. Butterflied it off, are you? You cannot do that. I don't want them all butterflied like that. Those days have gone. I am not coming this far now to start slopping food out. Uh, Chris, come around now, please. I don't want him pasteurizing the pork chop just to get it out there. Yes, sir. We need to get it in the oven, okay? Guys, we've got two angus steak, one medium, well, one medium. 127, 128. 127, 128. Excellent. Thank you. Make sure you're calling back. Thanks, guys. Letting him know. I wish that Chappie would be a little bit more open-minded to accept some of the changes. I really hope he does. Fucking hell. With Chef Chris switching from expediter to head chef. Let's go. Urgently, please. Food is now making its way out to the dining room. Here's your food, bon appetit. How hungry are you? Thank goodness. We love you. All the flavors complement each other. It's very good. The mac and cheese is amazing. 
Everybody's been happy with the food. Thank God. All your dinners are out. We're back at the last table. <laughs> it's just wonderful. We have a great new menu that's fresh and delivered beautifully. We just have to stick with it, believe in it, and do everything we can to make it happen. How are you? I'm OK. Everybody seemed to love everything, but I just have a hard time with it. I still think my food's great. Yeah, that'll be one pain of my ass gone. OK, Chappie, after Chris's time is done here, you need to find and invest in a chef like Chris. There should be someone qualified in that kitchen on a daily basis. Absolutely. Because it's worth it. The only thing that's going to keep this place on the map is the food. Will do. Star, you must make me a very serious promise. You must not let Chappie go backwards. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. Good. I'm only telling you this for your own good, because you are one stubborn man. Good luck to you both. Thank you so much. Yeah? Thank you. You what heard my prayer. I don't know how you did it. Thank you so much. Come here, you. Ah, uh, good luck to you both. Thank okay. you. Take care. Thank you so Thank much. Good night. Good night. Good night. I've got one word to describe my time here at Chappies, and that is challenging. Mainly because Chappie led his restaurant slide in so many ways. But we made a major turnaround, and he even agreed to get rid of his ridiculous chef's hat. My only hope now is that he's got rid of all those bad habits, because if he hasn't, this restaurant has no chance. Wow. Not long after Chef Ramsay left, in spite of positive feedback about the changes, Chappie went back to his old ways. But if you didn't do what I asked you. I should have come behind you and babysat you. You're right. The majority of his original dishes are back. Blackened pork chop, blackened swordfish on the fly. And so is the uncertainty of the future of this Nashville restaurant.